Maybe it's been a while since you felt like you've had your mojo. Maybe you remember times in the past, maybe several years ago, where you actually felt incredible. A lot more incredible than you do now. I feel like all of us at some point in our lives have had little checkpoints where we remember feeling incredible. Either we were in a flow state where we were uninhibited by our social anxiety, or maybe times where you just felt energetic, enthusiastic about life, and motivated to actually take constructive action. In my life, I feel like I have finally entered a period where I feel good. Like, most days I feel quite good. And that's sort of foreign to me. You know, I'm very prone to negative emotion, I get into my head a lot, and depression runs deep in my family. So I pay special attention to the actions that I do throughout the day and how that affects my mental health. And recently I've started doing a few things that have really helped me feel better and I live my life with more energy, more enthusiasm towards my work, my personal life, and overall it just feels better to feel this way. So hopefully through this video, if you guys are going through a rough time and you want to enter into into a period of your life where you just feel better on average, you're more enthusiastic to wake up in the morning, and you wanna feel like you have your mojo back, then hopefully some of the things that I've started doing can help you as well. Feel free to experiment, take it or leave it, but this is what I've been doing to make me feel really good. So number one is very simple. Every single morning I've been waking up at the same time every single day and immediately I walk outside and I smell the fresh air. And bonus points if the sun is shining and you see a little bird flying by and let the hot sun beat down on your pale face. I'm talking about me of course, I have no melanin in my skin whatsoever. And if I wanna take this one step further, I'll actually go for a walk. Before I have my coffee, I'll put on my running shoes and I'll go for a walk around the block. And while this practice may sound overly simple, it's kind of a game changer for me because I actually feel like endorphins are rushing through my body. My brain is getting flushed with positive neurochemicals. It also gives me a little window of time to not look at my phone and start thinking of the things that I can accomplish today. I can think of the people in my life that I want to spend time with, I can think of the person that I want to be, and I can be grateful for a fresh start, a new opportunity to restore order and contribute to the world and make a difference, hopefully. And this might sound super cheesy to you, I mean, it would for me if I didn't start going on these morning walks. Because when you're cooked up in your house all day and you immediately jump on the internet, it's hard to have cheesy, wholesome thoughts like this. And when someone says something like this to you, you might say, oh, that sounds overly Disney, being thankful for a fresh start. But honestly, Stepping outside of your house and getting off the internet will do that to you. You will actually start to have positive thoughts again. So first thing in the morning when you wake up, don't go on your phone, don't check Twitter, walk outside of your room, put on some runners, go walk out your front door. You don't even need to put on shoes. Just walk out your front door, fill your lungs with that fresh, clean air, look up at the sun, but not too long or you'll go blind, and just take a few seconds to be thankful for a fresh start and a new day. That will set the tone for the entire rest of the day, and you will never regret doing that. And that leads very well into the next thing that I've been doing, which is intentionally doing things and going places that elevate my mood. So this one sounds really obvious, but I actually don't think it is. Because so often in our lives, we will do the same things every single day. We'll go to work, we'll come home, we'll sit on the computer. We tend to do the things that we've always done. And we slowly and slowly and slowly might become more cynical. We might start to think that there's no point. You know, what's the point of doing the same thing every single day, waking up and working for the same boss and the same job that you don't like? But every once in a while, your sister might text you and say, hey, do you wanna go for a walk on the beach shore? And you usually say no, cause you're super busy, but this one time you're like, okay, sure, let's do it. I haven't hung out with my sister in a long time. So you go for a walk on the beach and you look around and you say, holy smokes, the world isn't so bad. The sounds of the seagulls chirping in the air. I don't know if seagulls chirp, they kind of like squawk. You know, people are walking their dog. This attractive couple is on a very awkward first date and it's fun to people watch them. And you're getting moving, the blood is flowing. And all of a sudden this new experience gives you a fresh perspective and it elevates your mood. But it's so funny because everyone can kind of relate to this story, but then they go back to doing the same thing that they've always done, slowly becoming more cynical until they reach a breaking point and they do that kind of thing again. But why not implement the things that make you feel good regularly into your life? Why not have a weekly 
weekly schedule of going for a walk on the beachfront with your sister? Why not actually go to that book group on Friday filled with smiling faces and attractive people of your same age? And this is going to be very different for everybody. You know, what makes me feel good might not necessarily make you feel good. You know the things that kind of break up that pattern and make you kind of excited to be alive again. Make an effort to make that thing a regular part of your life because those things are the types of things that make life worth living. So try to really evaluate in your life what are the things that make you feel inspired, invigorated, refreshed, and optimistic. I don't know what that is for you, but if there is something that comes to mind, maybe it's something that you haven't done in a long time, make an effort to make that a regular thing in your life. It will give your better thoughts, your more optimistic viewpoint, some more airtime. And over the course of days and weeks and months and years, you will find that giving your more optimistic tendencies more airtime will really benefit your mental health in the long run. Okay, so the third thing that I've been doing that has really helped me feel incredible is that I've started to put more effort into my appearance. So this is probably gonna be the most controversial one on this list. I feel like a lot of self-improvement advice out there, including some I've probably given as well, has really emphasized the point that external circumstances won't necessarily make you happier. You know, if you buy a new car, you get a fancy house, you get a cool dog that, you know, people compliment you on. You know, these things won't make you a better person. Especially if the desire to attain these material possessions comes from a place of insecurity. You know, if you're feeling really bad about yourself, like you have really low self-esteem and low self-worth, then buying a new shirt and spending a bunch of money on a new iPhone probably isn't gonna help you. It'll just distract you for like a day. I think everyone knows this, but I think they're all also is something to be said about dressing in a way and presenting yourself to the world in a more dignified way, in a way that reflects your inherent dignity and worth as a person. So the clothing choices that you have and the fact that you cut your hair and trim your nails isn't necessarily what makes you have value as a person, but it sure as hell reflects it. And as we've talked about in previous videos, your subconscious is very perceptive. It's constantly evaluating other people and making judgment calls about them, but it's also doing the same thing to you. So when you wear clothes that don't fit, if you wear clothes that are extremely kind of drab and uninspiring, you're not showering, you're not trimming your beard or cutting your hair, your subconscious is picking up on these things. It is evaluating your appearance and making a judgment call of your self-worth based on that. So there's almost no avoiding it. It's an automatic mechanism. And it's almost like a chicken or the egg thing because by getting a fresh haircut, by buying nice clothes that fit you and by showering and taking care of yourself and appearing well in the world and orderly in the world, your subconscious does look at that and it will feel better about your self-worth. Obviously, this isn't a permanent solution, but it all contributes to this feeling of dignity. Man, it really sounds like I'm just rationalizing the fact that I got some new drip recently. I don't know if you need to do this much thinking before buying new clothes, <laughs> but hopefully you can see where I'm coming from. I do really believe that if you're more proud of the clothes that you put on, the haircut that you have, or the lack of hair and just keeping shit tight against your head, I do feel like you'll go about the world in a more confident way. It's kind of like making your bed in the morning and you can't just restore order to the whole kingdom by cleaning the foyer, but cleaning the foyer does reflect the fact that you're an orderly kingdom or that you run an orderly kingdom or whatever. I don't know. I'm bad at allegories today, but I feel great. <laughs> okay, so the fourth thing is that I've been keeping a list to restore order. So in the notes app of my phone, I keep this list called things in order. And I have a giant inventory of all of the main domains of my life that I could be restoring order to. It starts with my physical surroundings. Is my bedroom clean? Is the office clean? The top floor, the main floor, the basement. How about my finances? Where am I at with that? My habits, how are those? You know, my social life, my spiritual life. I really flesh out each category of my life and what criteria I would have in order for me to consider that domain relatively orderly. So this might seem kind of obsessive and I feel like there's a self-improvement philosophy that is making its way through the internet that would be tempted. A philosophy that would be tempted, a philosophy, philosophies don't get tempted. But if you hold this philosophy, you might be tempted to say that's self-obsessive. You're setting yourself up for 
misery because that's conditional happiness. You have a big criteria of things and achievements that you have to hit before you can feel totally satisfied in life. But I think that's completely BS because the world is always and constantly in a state of decay. If you leave things alone, things always get worse and disintegrate rather than stay the same. Some might call it entropy, some may call it the destructive nature of time, but that's just the way the world works. If you neglect taking care of your teeth, your teeth will rot right out of your skull. If you don't clean your kitchen regularly and do the dishes, a stench will start to develop and you will attract pests. No matter how you spin it, if you're not constantly maintaining order, if you don't live your life in a mode of being that is constructive, then time will naturally destruct. But there's a silver lining to all this. It's not so hamster wheely and fatalistic. And that silver lining is that it actually feels good to restore order in your life. So when you have this thorough list of things that you have to restore order in your life, to check those boxes feels good on the inside. It makes you feel proud of the existence that you're living. When you put your head on your pillow at night, you can say, I put my time to good use today. And without that direction in life, without that game plan of like what you're actually doing in the present moment and what you're working towards, then by definition, you're directionless, which is kind of synonymous with meaninglessness. Directionless? meaningless. Either way, it's not good. So one of the most optimistic things that I've done recently by far is to make this thorough list. And every single day I try to check a box or check a fraction of a box and just take inventory of all the things in my life that I have autonomy over all the things that I can contribute to, and it helps me feel like I'm the master of my fate. The ironic thing is I'm actually kind of tired. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. So if my eyes are puffy and I look kind of miserable, it kind of totally goes against this whole message. You might be watching this video and be like, Joey says he's okay, but he doesn't look okay. Um, but I feel great. So the final thing on this list is a no brainer thing, but it absolutely has to be covered because it's probably the most important thing. You've just heard it a million times before. Number five is that I stopped being an absolute dum-dum with my health. There's no getting around the fact that when you start working out, when you start being active and you get the blood pumping and the iron, uh, when you start juicing, no. Don't juice. There's absolutely no getting around the fact that when you start going for runs, you start getting exercise, you feel like a Greek god. When you drink enough water, you feel like Poseidon. The monotonous things in life don't feel so drab and absolutely agonizing to get through. It's because you actually have the mental energy to get through them. So on average, save for last night, obviously, I've been getting way more sleep. I've been drinking more water. I've been hitting my very specific supplement stack, which I'll go over right at the end here. I've been working out. I've been doing more cardio. I've been going outside for walks and taking care of my health like this is the cornerstone of my mental health. You know, your physical health and your mental health are so intimately linked in ways that are beyond our understanding. So let's talk about my supplement stack. That's what everyone's probably dying to know. Um, I kind of covered it in a previous video, but I've kind of modified it. So I am not advocating or prescribing anything to you. I'm just telling you what I take. Always consult your medical professional uh, of choice, your favorite one, on what you should be putting into your body. And I'm not a doctor, I'm just a dude. But this is what I have every single morning and it makes me feel great. All right, so my current supplement stack is vitamin D, which I have uh, in oil form with a olive oil carrier. So it's vitamin D3 and K2. I have 500 milligrams of vitamin C, which keeps me healthy during these viral times. I take five milligrams of creatine with water. And that is actually one of the only proven nootropics that apparently contributes to short-term memory, which is actually really interesting because usually it's just used for bodybuilding and going to the gym and for athletes. But not only does it help with your physical energy, but also your mental energy and short-term memory, which is crazy. I also am a big fan of maca. I personally find that it gives me more energy. Apparently it boosts libido too. Um, so the final component of my supplement stack is actually using a product, which is also the sponsor of today's video, but I've been using them for years, be way before they were a sponsor of this video. And I actually reached out to them saying, please sponsor my stuff. I'm basically a walking ad for you anyways, so I might as well just 
further evangelize in my video and then you can just pay me to do that instead of me doing it for free all the time. A big thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. There's a very good reason why AG1 by Athletic Greens is my main supplement. It's because there's basically no competing with the amount of nutrients that's in one scoop of this stuff. There's 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens in one convenient daily serving. AG1 supports your energy, focus, gut health, digestion, digestion, immunity system, and mental clarity without the need to take multiple products or pills. Athletic Greens uses these whole foods and these natural sources and condenses them down to this single scoop, which you add to water, you shake it up, and you drink it. And compared to so many different health drinks and greens powders that I've tried throughout my long history of trying different nootropics and trying to optimize my health, this stuff by far tastes the best. So it's just a very pleasant way to start my morning with the confidence that I'm giving my body all the tools that it needs nutritionally to tackle the day with energy. So if you're interested in joining me in this very simple health optimization habit that I've been partaking in for over two years now, then use my link in the description below and you'll actually get a year's supply of the vitamin D and K2 complex that I have every single morning, as well as five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. So once again, if you're interested in taking advantage of this incredible offer and getting a year's supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase, then click my link in the description below. Optimize your health, feel invigorated and powerful, and as usual, have a great time. If you like this video, make sure that you hit like. If you hit the like button, then it actually, the algorithm goes, oh, this is a good video. I will shove this guy's bald head into other people's homepages, helping them out, which also helps me out. So it's a win-win for everybody involved. So make sure you actually click the button because I want you to. If you're lurking here, consider subscribing and hitting that, no, don't hit the bell icon. You don't need any more needless notifications in your life. Yeah, just consider subscribing. It, it just looks good on paper. And check out the second channel. There's a lot of fun stuff on there. Some family vlogs of mine if you wanna to get to know me better. There's some Q&A videos and there's gonna be a lot of fun stuff, potentially even a podcast popping up on there pretty soon. And if you're on Instagram anyways, which you probably shouldn't be because it's cancerous and, um, brutal, but if you uh, don't follow my advice and you still go on Instagram, then you might as well follow our Instagram because it's probably slightly less of a waste of time than other people's Instagram. I don't know, that's a bad pitch. We, we just need more followers, I think. But if you don't feel like following it, don't follow it. Um, cool. But other than that, that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.